and welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything ETFs. I'm your host, Bob Pisani, and we want to focus today on two very specific topics. First, the S&P 500 snub of Tesla, that's what it was, and a new exchange that focuses on ESG-type investors. Let's start with the S&P declining to include Tesla in its recent announcement of new inclusions. Uh, we're talking to Tom here, uh, Tom Lydon, and of course, uh, some other people we talking to on a regular basis, Andrew McCorvin as well. Tom, we often say the S&P strives to contain the largest companies in the United States. How is it that they excluded Tesla at $360 billion? And I think that's the 10th largest company in the United States. What exactly were they thinking in excluding this? Yeah, you're right, Bob. I mean, the key point here is the S&P 500 is not the 500 biggest companies. It's actually an actively managed index. And they made the decision, even though it met some of their criteria, not to include it. Um, so what's interesting here, Bob, is when you look back 100 years ago, the Dow Jones Industrials was the, was the benchmark. 63 years ago, when you and I were babies, uh, it was the S&P 500. I think the S&P right now is playing defense. And many investors and advisors and institutions are looking for indexes like the NASDAQ 100, that are a little bit more modern in nature that will take into account, especially in this new economy, companies that are more forward thinking. But they didn't want to take yeah. a gamble on Tesla, and that would have been a big move for them, and uh, they're under some scrutiny for that. Yeah, I could take the other yeah, side. You know, uh, Andrew, uh, yeah, well, I, I go ahead, that, Andrew. But I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Andrew. I think that um, it's okay. I mean, I, you're, you're exactly right. I think investors will go to other indices. However, um, you know, I'm not always the biggest believer in that history always repeats itself. And we're in a new time with the, the, the meteoric rise of some of these companies. I'll point out that Facebook took over six months to get included. And I would argue that Facebook had more of a, you know, more of a people thinking about what it meant for, our, you know, for everyday life than a, than a Tesla, even though Tesla's actually obviously done quite well. But to have a little bit of human intervention, I, I'm actually in the camp that that's still okay. Does that mean that slows them down? Does it mean that people say, you know, they're not up to the times? Um, you know, as it pertains to investing, I've seen a lot of rules-based only investment strategies not do too well in this kind of environment. So to take a pause and say we're going to look at this and just think it over, it doesn't mean that Tesla's never going to make it. I think they're just taking a pause. Yeah, yeah I, I think they, they probably will that, get but in. But you know, we Go ahead, also Tom. have companies like we have companies like Zoom, DocuSign, Moderna, which are getting a lot of attention these days. They're getting a lot of growth. They'll probably continue to grow over time. They're not in the S and P 500 either. Uh, they are in the yeah. in the Nasdaq 100. So again, we just have well, to the be question more is this. to it. Yeah. The question is this: Do investors want? more certainty with a rules-based system like the Russell 1000. I mean, it, it, this will go into Russell, two, Russell 1000, obviously, but it, it, this is a reminder, I think, to everyone. The S&P is not rules-based. It's, it's essentially a committee. Uh, there are some general rules, but they have a lot of discretion. And obviously here, they didn't consider size as a critical factor for inclusion right now. Do you think investors are more comfortable, uh, Tom or Andrew, with rules-based systems now that are more easy to discern what exactly the rules are. Right. Well, but it's very yeah. easy so, to say then. Oh, go ahead, John. No, go ahead. It's very easy to say a rules based system is working now and now it's not working now under the current rules. Right. Which is going to have its popular times and not. I just am a little old school in the thinking that S&P has a brand and a trust, if you will. Right. And you'll see that in that. Why? The institutions and endowments and, let's say, pension plans, you know, that have promises to their long-term employees, their benchmark ends up being S&P because they kind of trust the process. Um, it's not to say that rules don't work. It's, and there are rules with the S&P. I just think there's some old-school thinking in that and, and a brand that they've kind of built with that name doing kind of a hybrid. Rules, but we're going to – we have the right to change, you know, not, not just value those rules in. Yeah, I, I yeah. think the, the important point here is that we often say the S&P 500 is the 500 biggest companies, and it's not. Um, and while they strive to represent the large cap part of the stock market, 
it's not quite accurate to say that they're the biggest 500 companies that are out there. And this is a good reminder uh, uh, of that. I think a better question, guys, is why did they decide not to include it? And I think probably, perhaps, uh, the volatility was an issue there. I think also, what are they exactly? So if you put a $300 billion company in, th that changes the market dynamics. W what else are you going to necessarily leave out? Do they need another category? Right. Is it an auto stock? Is it a tech stock? How about some kind of new category maybe to be created in the future? Um, alternative transportation. I don't know, uh, Andrew or Tom. Maybe that's yeah. what they need. My Obviously, is, they're looking for some reason great. to include it, but they didn't make it right now. Why didn't it? Yeah, my, my guess is volatility. You made up a great point, Bob. Now, all that makes a lot of sense. I, let's look at a different stock just for an example. Let's say Moderna comes out and has the vaccine, right? That will be a really big company really fast if it's not already. And then three months later, God forbid, all right, this one didn't work. Scrap it. AstraZeneca. And then what is the S&P at? Like, oh, sorry, we put that in there. we got to yank it out now. I mean, yeah, rules base would do that for sure. But maybe that's, that's a guess. Just a guess is that they think about the volatility and the rather meteoric rise of these names. But, Tom, I'd, be, I'd love to hear what you think. Yeah. yeah so, so we know the S&P 500, 28 percent is rep represented by FANG and Microsoft. I think investors have enjoyed the run-up that we've seen in those stocks and what that's meant to the S&P 500 index. Going forward, investors, especially index investors, hope that they'll also have a piece of those future FANG stocks. When we see instances yeah. like Tesla, which is such a big company not included, that concerns me. Yeah. We're not going to settle this here. I think the answer is they're going to include it eventually, and I'll bet you they'll create some kind of new sub-index category. I mean, literally alternative transportation or something like that and figure out a way to get it in there.